What's up old school homies? Welcome to another beer review. Michelob Ultra. Oh man. I'm not going to give you any premonitions or nothing. No way. We're just going to we're just going to drink it with an open mind. Now this is a 25 ounce beer. I'm pretty sure I could have gone 24 and just been fine with that. And maybe I'm wrong. in a real proper glass here the chalice gotta say like the head is actually pretty cool you gotta admit the head is cool like it's not dying off it's pretty I poured a lot of beer in there but head retention yes we're doing it Mouthfeel. Wow, this is actually really good. Not gonna hate. Even though I don't like light beer, this is actually light, light beer. I've had this before. It is pretty freaking light, dude. Um, this particular one is finishing dry which is good. There's no off yeast flavors. Temperature control when they fermented it was probably pretty good compared to the last beer I had. It's like you might be able to perceive the Anheuser-Busch yeast strain in here if you really try. But it finishes dry, so the yeast flavor is not really there. It's not malty because it's pretty watered down. It's pretty much water. I think I did need the extra ounce. I don't see this going nowhere. I mean, it's good. It, it's finishing dry. What does that mean, Travis? Well, let me tell you what that means. When a beer finishes dry, it actually does leave kind of a dry feeling in your mouth. But what it refers to is the attenuation of how much sugars were consumed by the yeast. The, dr the drier, the less you know, sugar is left in the beer. If the beer doesn't finish meaning the yeast haven't eaten all of the sugars, it's not going to be dry. You're still going to taste like a little bit of residual sweetness. And a dry beer won't be sweet, no. Because there's no, there's no sugars in it. And at that point, there's benefits, uh, both to the digestibility of the beer because your, your stomach doesn't have to consume those extra difficult to consume sugars because they're usually the longer chains of sugars that are left behind. And if you leave a beer in the sun or something, it might finish, but like over time. And it'll probably taste like crap too if you do that. But yeah, the attenuation of this beer is, is pretty high. I would say definitely 98% attenuated here oh, yeah. so yeah actually another benefit to dry beers less hangover effects yes the less work your body has to do to break down the rest of that crap the better off you are you know they used to have Bud Dry. It was good. It was supposedly fermented at 55 instead of 52 or 50. And the warmer temperatures actually gave it, you know, because yeast are actually more active at higher temperatures. But the alcohol that yeast make 
in higher fermentation temperatures taste bad. They're heavier alcohols, fusel alcohols, uh, less digestible. So if you start fermenting the beer cold, and then on the last day, you know, after all the sugars are consumed, in the last few days, you can let the temperature rise, and the last of those sugars will be consumed by the yeast, and then you won't get any hangover effects. I know this because I made hangover this beer. I'm not trying to brag about it, but it was pretty crazy. I made some 10% beers that like people kept drinking them like they're a Bud Light because they were just like so dry and good tasting. But you can't really drink beer like that. Like you're going down. I've seen people challenge it too. They they thought they could drink my beer. <laughs> you can't. You can't drink a whole bunch of 10% beers, dude. <laughs> Uh, I've seen it happen though. Not a good idea. This beer's good. I can't believe it. Michelob's always been better. But, um, nobody, I don't know. Is there ever like a Michelob drinker that kind of brings a Michelob to the party? I mean, this now, yeah, but like just the standard Michelob. Does anybody ever like crack one of those? It's actually pretty good. It was kind of like Budweiser's or Anheuser Busch's like craft beer with the Michelob thing. No one really caught on with it except for golfers. Because <laughs> golfers are a refined people. <laughs> I love golf too. You know, beer and golf. Never tried that together. You're going places. Because you got a golf cart. <laughs> the next best thing about drinking at the golf course. If you have the right people, you know. Sometimes it'll just turn people into act a fool, you know. You ever want to test anybody and see how dumb they are? Give them a beer and a golf cart and then you're, you're going to know. <laughs> Atta, homie. You know, he didn't even have he didn't even have a car, alright? I bring him to the golf course. He gets a, a few beers in him, rips the <laughs> fucking roof off of it. <laughs> Which isn't funny. <laughs> he went uh, tried to go under a tree. <laughs> Oh boy. I said, all right, man, you fucked up. <laughs> and uh, he said, all right, I'm gonna have to tell, you know, my friend that I did this, you know. <laughs> he went up to the pro shop. <laughs> he told them that he fucking crashed it and got it stuck. I don't even think he could have moved it. <laughs> I wasn't there, you know, like, he just acted a fool. I mean, I was there. I don't know where I was, you know? That's the thing about having... <laughs> where was I? <laughs> Why did he get the car, you know? How did he get the keys? Alright, guys. It's been real. I'll probably just chill for a while and then finish the rest of this beer. Nah, it's pretty light. What's really gonna happen? been real.